Good afternoon. Happy to be with you and to make a presentation on the question of um, the debt system. Uh, I will refer to this book, The Debt System, which has been published in 2017 in, by A Market in uh, Chicago. It also published in several different languages, Spanish, French, Turkish, Arabic, Arabic, sorry. Uh, and I will refer to other articles and, and I, when I will speak about the, the example of Greece 2015, I will refer to this book, which has been published in 2022, and which related the, the case of Greece in 2015. Uh, but I will begin with a, a historical perspective, uh, with a, the first point telling that the debt, external debt, external public debt, has been used by imperialist powers to subordinate, to dominate, or colonize um, different countries of the periphery from the beginning of the 19th century until now. Um, if we want to understand what happened in the 19th century at the, le at the level of how the world uh, evolved and, for instance, what happened after the Latin American independence in the 1820, uh, or what happened with Tunisia, with Egypt, with Greece uh, in the 19th century, also what happened with China, our China after 1840s uh, declined uh, brutally. And uh, the, the resurgence of China is only in the second part of the 20th century and in the last decades. The question of the debt is absolutely central. So some ex example. Um, you may know that the people of Haiti made the first revolution uh, against slavery and uh, got independent in uh, 1804. Uh, they succeed in defeating the imperial army sent by uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But uh, in 1825, the government of this, of this epoch, of the government of Haiti, accepted to pay a ransom to France to compensate for the liberation of the slaves. And uh, from this moment, Haiti was totally, in its possibility of development, totally subordinated. To the, uh, to the lenders uh, and uh, the final reimbursement by IT of the debt recognized uh, in 1825 happened in the, the year 1950s. Another example is Greece. Greece was a colony of the, or a province of the Ottoman Empire. Greece entered in a struggle for independence in the year 1820s. To finance the struggle for the independence, they got indebted with bankers from L London who uh, lend money to Greece in very abusive condition, 
only something like 30% of the money lent to Greece reached Greece, and rapidly Greece entered in a, in a default, I will explain why, and so was submitted to, the, to a troika of creditors, a troika composed by uh, Great Britain, uh, France and Russia. Russia in this epoch was an imperial power uh, and in very good relation with uh, France and uh, UK, including against the Ottoman Empire. And Greece, so since the beginning of its independence, was subordinated to the creditors. Uh, another example is uh, Mexico. In uh, 1862, uh, Napoleon III, uh, emperor of uh, France, decided to invade uh, Mexico because Mexico have repudiated the debt reclaimed by France and some French bankers to Mexico have repudiated the debt in, 60, in 1961. So, an invasion with 35,000 uh, soldiers and uh, the war to recover the independence uh, 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 if, uh, the, the duration was something like five years. Tunisia was also uh, transformed in a colony, a protectorate of France in 1881 uh, with the pretext of recover external debt uh, owed by T Tunisia to French bankers. And Egypt was uh, invaded by uh, the, British, the British army in 82 and transformed also in a protectorate. Uh, and Tunisia and Egypt on, only recovered their independence in the year 1950s. So, that's some historical example I analyzed in the, the book, The Debt System. I, I explain in this uh, book that uh, the condition in which countries incurred external debt were very onerous, very abusive, and it was logic that uh, to pay back the debt, it was absolutely necessary to uh, incur a new debt to make possible to keep on with the uh, reimbursement. And uh, so, for instance, the, the loans on the, 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 the credit uh, given to uh, Latin American, new independent Latin American countries, Greece, etc., uh, in the year 1820s, I as I told you, for Greece, something like 30% of the money read the country, the countries. The interest rate was 6 to 7%, but with commission of 8 to 10%. And uh, we had the first generalized debt crisis in 1826, because the bankers in London entered in the first financial crisis of the modern capitalism. The first financial crisis of the capitalist system uh, is, the, 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 the date is December 1825, when the bankers entered in bankruptcy, stop giving loans to the peripheral countries, but also to 
corporation uh, in, in Europe. And so, because the peripheral countries needed new loans to be capable to pay back the old loans, because the, they were not receiving any new lo loans, they progressively entered in default from the year 1827-28. And so they had to renegotiate the, the payment and were submitted to new conditionality imposed by the, by the creditors, by the bankers. I explain in, in my book that in general, the reason for which debt crisis exploded uh, are based or, or localized in the imperial powers, in what happened in the imperial powers. Uh, so, in the case of 1825, that the bankruptcy of the bankers in London. If I, I can analyze what happened in the, with the second generalized crisis of the 1817, the end of the uh, 19th century, the third debt crisis, the fourth debt crisis is linked to the uh, 1929 crash in Wall Street and the bankruptcy of the banks in the US in March uh, 33, and the generalization of suspension of payment in the 1930s. The, the reason for the third world debt crisis of 82 is what happened with the decision of the Federal Reserve of the USA, the Central Bank of the USA, to increase brutally the interest rate uh, in October 79, which provoked the debt crisis at the beginning of the 80s. And if we analyze what is happening just now, when we are meeting here, we have a new debt crisis provoked by the decision of the Federal Reserve of the USA, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England since March 22 in the case of the Federal Reserve to increase brutally the interest rate. You will remember that from 2012 until 2022, we had zero interest rate. Uh, the interest rate was zero in world. It was the policy decided by these three uh, central banks. The policy name or called uh, quantitative easing, which was replaced in 2022 by the quantitative tightening, which means increasing substantially the uh, interest rate. So in, at the beginning of uh, 22, the interest rate was well, zero. And now in the USA and in England, uh, it, it was raised uh, up to 5.5. And in uh, uh, the Eurozone, 4.5. The consequence of that is the following one. During the quantitative easing period, uh, because the rate was zero uh, in the north, the investment funds and the bankers were looking for a better yield better rentability. So they bought a lot of bonds issued by 
African, African countries, Asian countries, Latin American countries, uh, with interest rates around four, five, six percent. Um, but now, because the interest rate in the north are around five to six, uh, the investment fund don't want anymore to buy African bonds. And since two years, no African country succeed in issuing sovereign bonds on the financial markets. When, in the situation when, in the previous years, very poor country like Rwanda uh, or Ethiopia uh, were able to sell with absolutely no difficulty the bonds on the financial market in Wall Street or, or in London. So uh, we can affirm that in general, uh, the, what happened at the level of the situation of the capacity of the periphery of the countries of the periphery to keep on paying back their debt is linked to decision taken in the nose. When I say that, I don't mean that uh, there is no responsibility of the government of the South, of course. Corruption, uh, 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 bad policies of indebtedness are part of the problem. There is uh, absolutely no doubt about it. But uh, in, including for countries who, who, who are not particularly uh, corrupt, uh, they are um, victims of what are the decisions taken by the central banks and by the private bankers of, of the North. So, my, so the first point was the debt has been used to subordinate, dominate, colonize countries. The second was the condition in which the debt was uh, given to the countries of the periphery were abusive. The third point was there has been several general debt crises provoked generally by decision or crisis in the north, uh, so in the imperialist powers. My fourth point is several countries in front of this situation decided to repudiate debt. Um, not only peripheral countries, but also countries of the north. And the first important repudiation of debt in the 19th century was take, has taken place in the US, in the USA. Four states in 1837 decided to repudiate debt they consider as odious. It was public debt incurred by corrupted governors to build uh, railways which were not really built, uh, but the debt was reclaimed to the country. It provoked citizen rebellion in a different part of the United States and the new authorities under the pressure, uh, under the pressure of the people in, in, in rebellion was to repudiate the debt. And uh, what is interesting is that the Supreme Court of the US decided to give reason to the uh, state to decide to repudiate the debt and say to the bankers who were trying to sue the, the states, they say, uh, the Supreme Court say, you cannot, as 
private lenders sue, you cannot sue uh, public powers. But the other example of repudiation of debt, I already uh, uh, say that France invaded Mexico with the pretext of recovering debt. France invaded Mexico in 1862 after a decision taken by the President Benito Juarez, the first indigenous uh, or native uh, uh, president, uh, 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 Mexican from the Zapotec uh, 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 ethnic, uh, this president decided to repudiate the debt, telling that this debt is being incurred by usurpators uh, who made a coup against his legal government in uh, 59 and who were financially supported by uh, Mexican bankers but also Swiss and French bankers. Uh, the struggle of Mexico against the, the invasion was finally uh, a success they decided to execute the emperor Maximilien d'Autriche uh, imposed by the emperor Napoleon III. Uh, they recovered their independence and they were recognized uh, by the USA, by the UK and finally by France who signed treaties with the new independent Mexico uh, uh, in a situation in which France recognized the de facto situation of the repudiation and uh, uh, it showed that a country can repudiate that in the 19th century of course there were a real danger of being invaded because during the 19th century, uh, international law allowed uh, creditor countries to invade debtors countries who were suspending the payment. This uh, uh, justification disappeared uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, there, there has been no more invasion of countries with the pretext of rec recovering uh, debt, yeah, I would say after uh, 1915. And th that was the, the, the creation of the International Court of Justice of Den Hague. Uh, at the beginning of the, the 20th century was around the question of the dispute on the question of the debt. So this International Court of Justice who will give soon his opinion, its opinion on the question of the request by South Africa against Israel on the question of genocide against Gaza uh, population. Uh, this court was created uh, 120 years ago around the question of the dispute uh, on how to recover, uh, to recover debt. And when it was created, it was because there, were, there has been an agreement between the US representative and Latin American representative to say uh, there were no, there were, well, was no anymore the possibility to invade country to use force uh, to recover debt. 
Uh, other example of repudiation of debt is at the end of the civil war in the US, uh, the, that the 14th Amendment of the US Constitution who said that uh, if the thousand states who participate to the Confederation against the Union during the Civil War, if they wanted to reintegrate the Union, they should repudiate the debt. The argument was uh, for the Union, and the point of view of Abraham Lincoln was, we will not, as the Union, pay for debt incurred to struggle uh, in support of the rebellion of the South uh, and to maintain slavery in the, in the South. Uh, in 1898, USA also repudiated debt reclaimed by Spain to Cuba uh, after the, the war between Spain and US, the USA on the question of Cuba. Cuba was a colony of Spain, and the USA decided to support the independence of Cuba, and so entered in, in a war with Spain. And when Spain said to the US, OK, you took the control of Cuba, you should assume the debt incurred by Cuba to Spain, the, U the US representative said, uh, no way to, to pay for that debt. It is an odious debt. It is an, a debt incurred to maintain uh, the people of Cuba, of Cuba as a, a, a colony of Spain and uh, we are for the independence and, and for the end of the colonization. There was, was also a repudiation of the debt by Mexico in 1914, very important repudiation of that is just after the October Revolution uh, in Russia. Uh, so the, the uh, struggle against the Tsarist Empire, the Bolshevik Revolution, and the decision in February 1918 to repudiate all the Tsarist debt, including, uh, but I will not enter in, in, in detail, but I think it's important when we see now the, the war uh, in Ukraine and the imperialist, Russian imperialist invasion of Ukraine, it's important to have in uh, 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 to take into account that in this epoch, uh, 1918, the Bolsheviks and the Lenin were totally in favor of the sovereignty of the people. And so they decided when they uh, succeed in uh, uh, defeating the the terrorist regime, to overcome the terrorist regime, they decided to give independence to Poland, to the Balt Baltic Republic, to other parts of the Tsarist Empire, and to pay compensation for the colonization by the Tsarist power uh, who subordinate this country. And also, so in, in the first uh, constitution of the USSR, they gave the sovereignty to Ukraine uh, and the right to Ukraine to reclaim its total independence and separation from the uh, USSR. I say that because if you have followed what happened with the pretext of the invasion of Ukraine, 
you should uh, read a very important discourse given by uh, Putin in July 21. In this discourse, he said, he criticized and considered Lenin as a criminal who was responsible of the separation from Ukraine from Russia. And uh, so he said, uh, Lenin was responsible of this crime against Russia and uh, uh, the constitution, the USSR constitution was uh, 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 a mess, was against the interest, the common interest of the Russian, the Ukrainian are Russian, uh, Belarusian are Russian, we are all Russian and we cannot accept what happened in, uh, with the creation of the USSR. Okay, so uh, Russia in February, revolutionary Russia in February 1918 decided to uh, repudiate completely the uh, Tsarist debt. In 1990, in 1919, Costa Rica also repudiated the debt and in uh, uh, summer 1919, when, was, when the Treaty of Versailles was uh, signed, to put a definitive end to the First World War, it was decided that the debt incurred by Germany to colonize Poland or to colonize African territories like uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Cameroon, uh, Togo, uh, which the, the, the Namibia, as it is named today, all this debt was eliminated, repudiated in the Treaty of Versailles, saying that this debt was odious uh, to the people, to the African people. Of course, France, the UK, Belgium, who uh, defeated Germany, decided to, to take this decision in the Treaty of Versailles because it was, it was their own interest. They didn't repudiate the, or, or they didn't support the, the struggle of the African people from, for the, their own independence in front of France or the British Empire or, or Belgium or Portugal, etc. But it is interesting to say that, uh, to, to, to underline that there was the repudiation of debt or a total cancellation of debt with the argument of this debt war is odious, is illegitimate. So, after uh, all this decision of repudiation and uh, a lot of litigation around the question of the, of the debt, uh, was elaborated a doctrine, the doctrine of odious debt by uh, a Russian jurist. He was a pro-Tsarist Jurist, he was a professor of, of law uh, in the capital of uh, the Russian Empire in St. Petersburg uh, before the revolution. He went to exile uh, after the victory of the Bolshevik. So he, he, were, he went to exile in Par here in Paris and in 1927, he published uh, 
a very long document explaining what is the doctrine of odious debt and uh, arguing or, or taking into account all the example of litigation between uh, the creditors and the debtors on the question of sovereign debt. So, the, if we want to summarize uh, the doctrine of odious debt, uh, to make it very simple, we can summarize like that. Uh, so the author, the, the name of the author is Alexander Naum Sack. Uh, he said there is a general principle uh, at the level of international law that the continuity of the uh, obligation of a state, including in case of uh, uh, a change, a radical change of regime of government. That's a general principle. But he said there is an exception. And the exception is when uh, the uh, country, the population of the country, or the new government can uh, argue that the debt reclaimed to the country is an odious debt. And he said an odious debt is a debt incurred against the interest of the people or against the interest of the state. The, the first criteria to define an odious debt. And the second criteria is the lenders should know that this debt was incurred against the interest of the people or against the interest of the state. So the lenders were complice of the government who decided to took an odious debt to accumulate an odious debt. Uh, and he, he elaborates this doctrine on several, uh, on the basis of several litigation and arbitrage. And for instance, he took as example what uh, happened in, a, in the case Costa Rica versus La Banque, uh, uh, Royal, Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, which was a British bank. Uh, this case was subject to an arbitration by the president of the Supreme Court of the USA, the Judge Taft, who has been before president of the USA. And Taft was recognized by, the, by London and by Costa Rica as an arbitrate in the litigation between the two countries. And Taft, uh, in his conclusion, the sentence given by Taft was that uh, the debt incurred by the previous regime, Tinoco, was incurred in its own interest and not in the interest of the people of the country or in the interest of the state. And he said, uh, Taft said, the Royal Bank of Canada has not been able to demonstrate that she was not uh, conscious of this fact. So it's very interesting because the judge Taft said that the, the lenders has the responsibility to give the proof that he was not conscious. Uh, so the responsibility of the proof is not the responsibility of the debtor, 
country, but the responsibility of the lender, which is very uh, important and positive uh, for the debt uh, country. This uh, doctrine is very controversial. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, lawyers and uh, governments say uh, it is impossible to, to implement this, this doctrine. But in several occasions, in the last uh, 20 years, it was uh, 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 taken into account. For instance, when uh, the US, the USA, with the support of, the, of Tony Blair and uh, uh, Asnar in Spain and the Japanese, etc., invaded Iraq, the Minister of Finances, the Secretary of the Treasury of the, of the US administration, convoked the minister of the G7 in Washington and told them uh, Saddam Hussein debt is not just debt. So we should uh, cancel totally Iraqi, uh, the Iraqi debt. And he uh, really uh, uh, take as argument the doctrine of the odious debt. Rapidly, several con advisors say, told him, don't, don't uh, uh, tell too loudly uh, uh, that uh, you support the, the doctrine of the odious debt and you want to implement it, to be implemented in the Ara Iraqi case because it could be implemented or generalized to other cases. Uh, um, Mobutu, the debt incurred by Mobutu, by uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines, uh, the apartheid debt uh, uh, in South Africa, etc. But anyway, in the case of uh, what happened in 2003, it was uh, the, the, the question of the odious character of the Saddam Hussein debt was uh, 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 taking as an important argument to cancel, at the end, they canceled 80% of the Iraqi date. Uh, okay, now I, I want to come to what happened after the Second World War and some. Uh, concrete cases uh, of a conflict around the question of the debt uh, in the last uh, 15 years. But, ah, il me reste combien de temps? 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so I have the time. After the Second World, World War, exactly just before the end of the Second World War, was convoked the Bretton Woods Conference, July 44, so 80 years ago. And uh, it was decided in this international conference to create the World Bank and to create the International Monetary Funds. These two institutions, I would say, at the, in the three uh, decades, after the Second World War, principally the World Bank uh, played a very important role on the question of the debt. Um, as I told you, in the 1930s, there, were, there has been a generalized suspension of payment of the debt. Germany, Nazi Germany decided to suspend the payment of the debt to uh, Great Britain, Belgium, France, uh, and Italy. So this country decided 
to suspend their payment to the, to the USA. 14 countries, Latin American countries, entered in suspension of, in suspension of payment. So there was a generalized suspension of payment in the 30s. After the Second World War, uh, we entered in a new cycle of lending and with multilateral, multilateral institutions, public multilateral institutions playing a role as lenders. And that this institution didn't exist before the Second World War. They intervene in some way to stimulate uh, and to convince the government of the periphery to take debt, external debt. They intervene, as I saw in, in a book published uh, in, in uh, 2023 in, by Pluto Press. Uh, the, the title of this book is uh, The World Bank, A Critical History. Uh, in this book, I make the, the, uh, all the history of the World Bank since uh, 1944. And I show that uh, the World Bank intervened as a tool of the Western powers, uh, and principally the USA, to try to discipline the government of the periphery, and also to intervene in a situation in which, the, begun after the Second World War, the Cold War, uh, between the USSR and uh, uh, Washington, and uh, its, uh, its allies in the western part of, of Europe, um, and uh, in a situation in which not only there was a, a Cold War, but we had several revolutions, socialist revolution, victorious socialist revolution. I mean uh, China in 1949 and Cuba in uh, 1959. And so the, this revolution uh, had a very strong influence uh, around the world, in the third world countries, in the countries who, who, who succeed in gaining the independence, like the majority of the African countries in the 50s and in the 60s, but also Egypt and uh, 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 Gamal Nasser, and uh, the situation was a struggle between two, two blocks, and bet uh, a part of these two blocks, countries and government trying to find a third uh, road to independence and to sovereignty and who create the, the non-aligned movement in which uh, India of Nehru, uh, Indonesia of Sukarno uh, and uh, the Sukarno go government, and uh, Egypt uh, and the uh, uh, Nasser government, and Yugoslavia under Tito, who, was, who has been expulsed by Moscow from the Soviet bloc, they created the non-aligned movement, in which Cuba, when they were victorious after uh, 59, uh, uh, in which uh, Cuba entered as part of the non-aligned movement. So in this context, a context in which also a government tried to implement endogenous model of industrialization for the South, uh, the model of industrialization by substitution of imports, uh, 
In this context, the World Bank intervened to say this type of model of endogenous uh, model of development are not the good way to uh, to take off as economy. You should, on the contrary, open your economy. You should uh, develop yourself with a model uh, based on exports and uh, you should uh, take debts and um, attract foreign private investment to succeed in developing yourself. So a model opposed to the model of the non-aligned movement, of the CEPAL, or since the CEPAL was the Commission of the United Nations for Latin America, and this, the CEPAL Commission was a commission led by an Argentinian, Raul Prebisch, who theorized this uh, easy model, so industrialization by substitution of imports. Uh, so that's the context of the 50s and 60s. And the, the World Bank, uh, with, the, with the government of Washington, on relation with the government of Washington, intervened to try to destabilize, to isolate the government who try to uh, implement such a model, including uh, supporting military coup against a progressive government. So, for instance, the coup against Jacobo Arbenz, president of Guatemala in uh, 54, uh, the coup against Mossadegh, the Prime Minister of Iran, in uh, 53, uh, the coup against uh, Jao, Jao Goulart, a progressive uh, president of Brazil in, in, 40, in 64, the coup in 65 against Sukarno in Indonesia, the coup against uh, Salvador Allende in, in 73, so a long list of coups orchestrated by the CIA and supported by the World Bank, because the World Bank, uh, when it was confronted with progressive government, in general, the World Bank decided to suspend the disbursement of credit and immediately after a coup, the World Bank with the IMF decided to lend money to the new authorities, military, military authorities, etc. We had a very high accumulation of debt in the, in the 60s and 70s. The prog several progressive governments were destabilized and uh, 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 dictatorial regime took the power. And with, I, would, I would say with the uh, the coup of Pinochet of 73, they began to implement the neoliberal model uh, uh, with the, uh, following the, the model of Milton, the, the economist of Milton Friedman and the Chicago boys. Uh, I would say the Chile of uh, Chile of uh, Pinochet was a laboratory of the implementation of the neoliberal model who, who has been generalized in the year 1980s. 
I mentioned that we had a very huge third world debt crisis in 82. Mexico entered in suspension of payment as a consequence of the decision of the Federal Reserve of the United States to raise brutally the, the interest rate. The majority of the loans to the third world countries were with flexible interest rates indexed on the rate uh, implemented by the Federal Reserve of the USA. So the explosion of the interest rate at the beginning of the 80s combined with the uh, counter shock, counter all shock of 81, I mean the decrease of the price of oil and other commodities, the combination of the two provoke the generalized uh, debt crisis of the third world countries in the 80s. And they began to, uh, the IMF, which was until this epoch less active than the World Bank on the question of the debt, began to be uh, the major player, giving loans, emergency loans to the country in suspension of payment to give the possibility to these countries to uh, uh, begin to renew the payment of the, of the debt at the condition of implementing structural adjustment program and general, generalizing the uh, neoliberal model. Now, as I told you, we are entering in a new international debt crisis of the periphery. The countries of the north will enter also, but we will see how exactly how will be the consequences for them. Now, the big consequences are for the countries of the periphery. I want to now to, to read the last part of my presentation, taking some example of what happened in the last, last 15 years. Ecuador in uh, 2000, 2008, 2007-2008, with a progressive government of the progressive government of Rafael Correa, elected at the end of 2006, Ecuador decided, the presidency of Ecuador, to create uh, an audit commission to analyze all the debt accumulated by, all the public debt accumulated by Ecuador between 76 until 2006. I was in, invited to be part of this uh, audit commission. There were 12 delegates from the social movements of Ecuador, indigenous movement, debt movement, feminist movement, uh, four organs of the state, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Justice, the uh, Anti-Corruption Commission, and uh, La Cour des Comptes. Pas comment dire hein? uh, l'équivalent. Uh, uh, the U.S. is a GAO, so General Administration Office, uh, analyzing the count of the of the of the state. Uh, in France, it is la, la Cour des Comptes. Treasury, huh? Treasury? No, 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 no. no. no, no it's uh, an independent office who control. 
the finances, including who control what, uh, how the budget is uh, uh, managed by the Ministry of Finance. Well, okay. And we were six experts, foreign experts, two European and four Latin American. And uh, this commission had the task to identify, to analyze, investigate uh, all the debt reclaimed to Ecuador and to identify if there was a part of this debt which could be uh, considered as uh, illegitimate or odious. So we analyzed during 14 months uh, all this debt. We uh, wrote our uh, conclusion, a document of 200 pages, you can read it, it is translated into English and it is written in Spanish. And on the basis of our conclusion, the Ecuadorian the government decided in November 2008 to suspend a, a public debt owed to the banks in the form of sovereign bonds uh, and to suspend the, the payment saying this debt is illegitimate. And the suspend, it was a unilateral suspension of payment. Ecuador say uh, we would be able to pay the debt because we have revenues from oil <coughs> and the price of oil are, um, uh, allow us to, to pay back the debt. But we don't want to pay back an illegitimate debt. And we want to use the money uh, which is used to pay back an illegitimate debt. We want to use it for uh, good purposes. We want to increase uh, the expenses in public uh, education, in public health. We want to recruit people. We want to raise the minimum wage etc. And so they suspend the payment. It was a big scandal. And the bankers say, our country who is able to pay is that because they have the, the money to do that. How can they uh, suspend the payment? But they did that. And uh, Ecuador succeeded in forcing the bond holders, let's say bankers, to, uh, to sell to Ecuador the bonds at a discount price of 70% discount price. So the Ecuador government buy, bought back uh, the, the sovereign bond of Ecuador at 30% of the nominal price of the bonds. So they uh, succeed in reducing uh, uh, at a very huge level the, the, the cost of servicing the debt and they were able to increase social expenses and to make better the life of the people in Ecuador. There were no uh, action against Ecuador, including because the creditors didn't want to make, to make too much noise and too much publicity to what Ecuador succeeded in in doing. Another example of uh, a, a sort of repudiation of debt by uh, 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 a state of the note recently is what happened with Iceland. 
in 2008, when we had the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy in, in the US, all the ba banking system in Iceland went bankrupt. And uh, in a situation of total deregulation of the banking system of Iceland, imposed by a neoliberal government some years before 2008. So the population of Iceland confronted with a decision of the uh, Icelandic government to accept, to compensate uh, Great Britain and uh, the Netherlands who uh, bail out the bankers, the Icelandic bankers, but their filials in the UK and in uh, the Netherlands. The government of Iceland decided to agree to compensate the British government and the Netherlands, and the people of Iceland entered in rebellion against this decision. Uh, so the president of Iceland decided to convoke a referendum asking the population of Iceland, do you agree to compensate uh, the UK and the Netherlands? And 93% of the voters say, no, we don't agree. Uh, I, 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 I will not enter in all the detail because they, they do open a new negotiation, they uh, uh, make, a, uh, they reach a new agreement, people again entered in rebellion, so the president for a second time convoked another referendum asking if the new agreement was acceptable and the people vote no, that it was not acceptable. And so at the end, Iceland repudiate the debt reclaimed by the UK and the Netherlands and it was an important victory for the country. Uh, the capacity of uh, economic recuperation of Iceland was very uh, rapid, very efficient in comparison of what happened with countries like Greece or Portugal or Ar Ireland in, in the same epoch. Uh, another example, but uh, not an example of victory, is what happened with Greece. In uh, 2015, people, the Greek people elected uh, or support Syriza a radical left coalition of parties uh, to be the government. Alexis Tsipras uh, became the uh, prime minister the 25th of January 2015. And uh, in circumstances of uh, big tension inside the Eurozone and uh, this government was elected with the, 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 uh, a program which say that Greece will not keep on reimbursing uh, illegitimate debt. Uh, Greece will uh, uh, create a new model of reconstruction uh, of the, the economy of the country and will reconquest the, the sovereignty of the, of the country uh, and will uh, uh, restore the economic rights of the wage owners, of the uh, pensionists, etc. So the government entered in conflict with the uh, European Commission. The president of the, the Greek parliament asked me to 
create an audit commission. So I create an audit commission asking people from different countries, including France, and people from Greece who has expertise in auditing uh, public debt to be part of a, an audit commission. We worked four months from uh, March uh, 2015 until mid of June 2015. We make a, a very uh, intense investigation, convoking to some hearing ex-high uh, functionaries of uh, the European Commission, etc., people of the IMF, and we conclude that the debt reclaimed by the Troika to Greece was odious. Um, but the government of Alexis Tsipras, under the pressure of the president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, of Christine Lagarde, director, general director of the IMF at this epoch, now she is president of the European Central Bank, the pressure of uh, Mario Draghi, who was the president of the European Central Bank, and people like Trichet, you will listen to Jean-Claude Trichet in a few days, Trichet is one of the responsible of the odious debt accumulated by Greece uh, with, the, with the Troika. Uh, and so Tsipras, under the pressure of the European Commission and the IMF, decided to capitulate. Uh, and uh, I think that if he would have the, if he would have taken the decision to suspend the payment of this debt during the the work of the audit commission, he would have created a completely different correlation of forces between the government of Greece and uh, the lenders. And it was possible to get a victory like Ecuador uh, got a victory in 2008-2009. Uh, 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 now, just to finish, to, to say that's not a question of history. It's really a question of what is happening now. As you know, uh, uh, one a little more than one month ago, took the 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 uh, and began the mandate of uh, Javier Milei, uh, the new president of Argentina. Uh, he expressed that he will implement the policy of Milton Friedman and Ordo liberal policy. He, so on the question of the debt Argentine, Argentina, which has a debt to the IMF of $45 billion, Argentina will be in a, is in a huge debt crisis just now. And what will do Millet on the question of the debt, what he will do with the IMF will have a very important uh, consequences for the people of Argentina and, I would say, Latin America. So, what I have said about the question of the debt, all this litigation and battles around this question are uh, related exactly what with the uh, act the present situation of a lot of countries who are in, uh, in condition of quasi-suspension of 
payment and uh, 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 agreement with the IMF imposing more and more neoliberal uh, policy against the people. I have finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.